about TPP, right? So that's the Trans-Pacific Partnership. It's a trade deal that uh, gives away a lot of our sovereignty. Now that's super relevant because corporations say, hey, if you try to regulate me, whether I'm putting toxic uh, material in the air, the water, as an example, um, you're preventing my future profits, so I get to sue you in an international court and stop your ability to protect your community. It's amazing. It's an amazing giveaway of democracy. Okay? So whatever else you might like or dislike in the trade deal, on that alone, there's no way you can do it. But TPP is not the only trade deal they're working on. They're also working on uh, TISA, which is Trade and Services Agreement. Now, in there is a provision that uh, revolves around the banks. So uh, this is thrown in there uh, to protect them. Now, listen carefully. I'm going to tell you what's in there, and then we will analyze what it means. They say here in Public Services International Report, the standstill clause would lock in current levels of services liberalization in each country, effectively banning any moves from a market-based to a state-based provision of public services. This clause would prohibit the creation of public monopolies in sectors that are currently open to private sector competition. So hold, I'm going to explain what that means. That sounds complicated, but there's a simple explanation. They continue. Similarly, the ratchet clause uh, would automatically lock in any futures action taking to liberalize services in a given country. If a government did decide to privatize a public service, that government would be unable to return to a public model at a later date. Now, this is not strictly for the banks. I'll give you an example that is not about the banks. For example, some countries have tried to turn water and some even electricity into private hands. This is a, it used to be a public utility in that country and they would they privatize it. Now, we nearly had riots and revolutions based on this because then companies would start charging exorbitant rates for water and local people couldn't afford it. If you're poor, water's not an option for you. <laughs> you can't. It would rain and the company would say, that that is my rain, my water, I have the rights to it, you're not allowed to collect that water and drink it for free. Unbelievable. Now what this would do is, if you ever privatized anything like water, electricity, etc., sorry, you're locked in forever, okay? You cannot then make it public utility again. Now why the banks? Why is this most relevant to them? Well, some places like Iceland, after the bank crash, nationalized their banks. Now that was the right strategy because it wound up leading to a great economic recovery in the long term. And right now they have one of the healthiest economies in Europe. And it's, it wasn't meant to keep the banks national forever. It wasn't, they weren't changing their uh, form of, of uh, the market economy that they had. All they were doing was, hey, these banks are in a lot of trouble. We're going to rescue them. But when we do, we should get the profits back uh, because we're the ones putting the money in. And once they are stabilized, we will privatize them again, which is exactly what happened. Now this would prevent that. You're never allowed to nationalize the banks. They're private, they cannot go back to being public ever. So if there's another crash, sorry, uh, you're going to have to pay all my bills. Uh, you can't, then if you rescue me, you can't expect the profit back like any regular investor would because that you would be publicizing the banks. You would be making them public and then that is not allowed according to this new trade agreement. Now that's a pretty big deal. If you lock that into place, that gives them an enormous and completely unfair advantage and might screw over the local populations in any country, whether it's Bolivia, it's Argentina, or here in the United States. So they've got to, of course, keep a secret. Here's another provision we found out about. On June 3, 2015, WikiLeaks released 17 key documents related to TISA which is considered perhaps the most important of the three deals being negotiated for fast-track trade authority. The documents were supposed to remain classified for five years after being signed, displaying a level of secrecy that outstrips even the TPP's four-year classification. So this is so important and so dangerous that the public is not allowed to know it about it when they are negotiating it, of course we only know because of the leaks, right? Thank God for those. That we're supposed to be in a democracy. But our government is giving away our democracy to multinational corporations and we're not supposed to find out about it and people who tell us about it get punished in a so-called democracy, right? And then afterwards, you're still not supposed to find out about it for five years as it's in place. Gee, I wonder why they want it to be secret. 
if it, if it was lovely and it was great for the American people and the people across the world, wouldn't you want them to know, hey, look at this great trade agreement we did. Look at all the wonderful benefits it has for you. Because the benefits are pretty wonderful, but they're for the multinational corporations that are negotiating. this. It's amazing, isn't it? They can find out anything about the deal. They oftentimes write the deal. So the multinational corporations have the right to make these laws to supersede American law, and the American people do not have the right to find out about it. Now, who do you think has more rights? The Supreme Court said that corporations are human beings and have all of the constitutional rights of human beings. They said they are people according to law. Okay? Now, they also have extra rights. They have the right to, uh, to come up with new laws and make sure you don't find out about it. And the whole point of a corporation was limited liability in the first place. That's also extra rights that a human being doesn't have. So the people that set up a corporation oftentimes can't get sued because of that limited liability. Extra rights. We have created, these are legal fictions. They didn't exist in the world. It wasn't like, oh, back in the day when we came out of Africa, there was the lions, the gorillas, and the corporations. No, corporations are legal fictions. We created them. They, they are machines built for a purpose. The purpose initially was just limited liability. They didn't have all those other rights. Now they have run amok. They've taken over the government. They are robots that have not, we have not built any morality code into. They're not built to be immoral. They're not built to be moral. They're built to be amoral. Their only objective, according to their code, which we wrote originally, is to maximize profits. And here they have done what a robot does. They have decided, if I take over a government by bribing legally, if I change the laws to be able to legally bribe the politicians, who also then nominate Supreme Court justices, I can buy the whole government. If I buy the government, I could rewrite the laws so I'm in charge and that government is not in charge. And the people, <laughs> we care about them least of all. They're in our way as we maximize profits. We have built robots, they have taken over, and now they're about to destroy our laws and our democracy. That is why we object to these trade agreements. And, of course, everybody in the establishment that is funded by those robots fighting tooth and nail to make sure that this happens. There are some progressives and some conservatives who are principled who are fighting against it, but the establishment of the Republican Party and the Democratic Party, of course, uh, primarily Barack Obama, the guy who promises change, uh, is doing the exact opposite. They are fighting on behalf of multinational corporations that have funded their campaigns for time immemorial. So Barack Obama works for them, Mitch McConnell works for them, John Boehner works for them. They don't work for us. And they're trying to steal our democracy in the middle of the night while we're not looking, while we're not allowed to look. That's what these trade agreements are about. Okay, I know. Uh, we're we're wild-eyed radicals because we actually read the contracts and the trade agreements that are now, some portions are, are public. Joseph Stiglitz agrees with all this. He's only won a couple of Nobel Prize in economics. What would he know? Yeah, I know. We're, we're the radicals.